Welcome to part two of the System Console Overview training video. My name is David Garcia, and we will take this training from where we left previously. In this demo, we will learn about System Console and some of its debug agents by using a simple design implemented in the Intel Agile X7 F Series Transceiver SOC Development Kit. The design consists of a platform designer system with these components connected to a JTAG to Avalon master bridge. Two parallel input output or PIO, which is a component that provides a memory map interface to general purpose IO port, which can be connected to external ports of the device or to any user logic in your design. One of these PIO acts as an output port for the platform designer system. The other PIO acts as an input port for the platform designer system. An on-chip memory that can be accessed through an Avalon memory map interface. And a system ID where you can read a custom ID code for the system. The output port of the system is connected to the proof of an in-system sources and proofs instance, as well as some external LEDs on the board. The input is connected to the source port of the ISSP instance. We will test the communication from the JTAG to Avalon master bridge to the rest of the components in the PD system and the ISSP instance in the design. Open Quartus and go to Tools, System Debugging Tools. Click on the System Console option. This will launch System Console. After opening System Console, locate the Tickle Console pane. Most of the times, it's on the bottom right corner of the System Console GUI by default. You can customize the layout later. Now, to access the JTAG to Avalon Master Bridge instance in the design, we need to find the correct service path. System Console uses a virtual file system to organize the available services that provide access to the different hardware modules you instantiate in your FPGA. Instances of each one of these services are referred to by their unique service path. You can look at the complete file system in the System Explorer pane. To locate the service path that we are looking for, we need to get the full hierarchy name for the master zero instance. Go to the project navigator in the main quarters window, locate the full hierarchy name column in the table and copy the full hierarchy. Use the get service paths command with the black dash h path. Use the previously stored hierarchy as one of the arguments as well as with the service type. In this case, master is the service type we want to access. Open the service using claim service. This command requires the following arguments, the service type, the service path, and the name of a collection where these claim services will be stored. The command will return a new service path to the claim service, so store the result in a variable to easily access it later. Now we will write a value to the output port of our system. The output PIO data register has the 0x10 address. You can see the base address of the memory mapped agents in the system view of your platform designer system. We will use the master write command which requires the following arguments. The open service path, the base address where you want to write the data, and lastly the data values you want to write. You can pass a list of values but in this case we are only writing one value. For this step we will read the value of the output PIO using the ISSP instance present in the design. We now need to open the service associated to the IMSYSTEM system and sources and pros instance in the design. We're going to follow the same process as with the master zero instance. We find and store the full hierarchy of the ISP instance in the design. We use the get service paths with the dash hpath black. And lastly, we use the claim service command 
to open the service. Run the ISSB read probe data command to read the current state of the probe port. It should be the same value we wrote previously on the output PAO. Now, write some value on the source port of the ISSB instance using the ISSB write source data command. Make a read operation on the input PAO with the master read 8 command. The base address of the data register of the input PAO is 0x00. You should see the same value previously written on the sources port of the ISSP. Now, make a read of the system ID. There is a value of 0x0f0f0f0f previously set on the system ID peripheral IP. Use the master read32 command to make a read on the base address of the system ID IP. The return value should be the same as the value set in the system ID IP. Now, we're going to write multiple data into the on-chip memory in a single write operation. First, we're making a read operation on the first 16 bytes of our memory. The base address for the memory is 0x1000. You can see that there is no data yet. Every return value is 0. We are going to generate an array of 16 random bytes, and we are going to write these values to the first 16 bytes of our memory. You can pass the array as an argument for the master write command. It will make concurrent write operations while iterating through the input array. To make sure that the write operations were done correctly, make another read operation like in the first step. You should see the same values from the random values list. This concludes the demonstration for this training. Be sure to check more of our trainings to learn more about system console.